making a Stuart model steam plant, part 65. Mounting the boiler on the baseboard and fitting a check valve, thus finding the best position for the boiler feed hand pump. The first coat of varnish that I applied to the baseboard is now thoroughly dry, and it feels really rough, which is just what I need, because I didn't brush off any of the dust. That's because I needed the dust to be still there, so that when I applied the varnish using a cloth, the polyurethane varnish, including the residue of the mahogany dust, was forced into any gaps between the planking. In this episode, I'm going to look at the position of the hand pump. There is a minor problem. Initially, when I lined up the hand pump with a check valve in the boiler, I hadn't decided to use this clamping system to hold the boiler to the baseboard. And now there is the minor issue that the lower union nut fouls the Allen cap head bolt. You may be wondering, why did I use Allen cap head bolts on these mounting brackets? And the answer is, they're made from stainless steel so they're not going to rust, and I think they look okay, plus they're very easy to fit and remove. What I'm attempting to do with this plant is make it very simple to assemble, because when it's completed it will be shipped to the owner in the USA, but it will not be shipped in one package. That would be very impractical, and I don't think the plant would survive. I'll start off by fitting this check valve to the boiler. Once fitted, it needs to be in the correct position, and to allow this to happen, I need to find a washer of just the right thickness, so once the check valve is tightened into the boiler bush, the water inlet is at the bottom. To do this, I'm using a copper washer that's just slightly too thick, or at least it was before I started. I rubbed it down on some wet or dry sandpaper just to thin it out, and now it's in the right position. As soon as I found that the check valve was in the right position, I removed it, applied some Loctite 542 and refitted it. I also removed most of the paint from the hexagon part of the check valve just to make it look slightly better. I will probably clean up this hexagon part a little more once it's been fitted. Here I'm tightening the check valve into the boiler bush and it's just in the right position. I'm having to pull it quite hard to make it sit tightly, but believe me, this is never going to leak. Even without the Loctite 542, it wouldn't leak. Time to look at the pipe connections. This pump, even though it has a large ram, only has inlet and outlets designed for 5.32 or 4mm pipe. The thread on the check valve is designed to take a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch union nut for 3 16 pipe. With both of the fittings in my hand, you can see the physical differences. The union nut in my hand on the right hand side is threaded quarter by 40 for the pump. I will have to use a union cone adapter in the left hand one so that the 5 of an inch pipe diameter will fit into both unions. When I do jobs like this, where possible, I try and keep the union nuts in place on the threads to prevent any damage. Here is a solution to the lower pump fitting fouling the Allen cap head bolt. Just lift the pump up a bit. I generally do this anyway, I do not like to see hand pumps screwed directly to wooden boards. As I mentioned earlier, the holes in the baseboard are in the correct position so that the pump aligns with the check valve. I don't always mount hand pumps like the way I'm going to show. Usually I will drill and tap a piece of steel bar, then drill a couple of holes in the steel bar, screw that to the wooden baseboard, then bolt the pump to the block. This time I've decided to do it differently. The holes in the pump were originally for 6BA bolts. I've enlarged the holes in the pump and the baseboard to take these 4BA bolts, and here they are screwed in position. This is quite an unorthodox way of working, and really I'm doing this on purpose, particularly the block. I really have thrown this together, and in another episode, which won't be in this series, it will be in the Model Engineering for Beginners series, I'm going to show how to repair holes that are in the wrong place in a piece of brass bar using silver solder. In this clip I'm using a Dremel cutter in my Proxon right angled motor tool and as you can see it's making short work of removing the heads from the bolts. Of course I don't have to do it this way, I could have removed the bolts, chopped them off on the bandsaw and refitted them, but I'm just trying different methods to show you the alternatives. In this clip I'm using my battery powered Proxon angle grinder to clean up the tops of the studs, which eventually will be the bottom of the studs. I know this is a long-winded way of doing it, and I am doing it on purpose, I haven't lost my marbles. I make tutorials, so I like to show different ways of doing jobs, 
just for a bit of variety. In this clip I'm using a pair of long nose pliers to remove the studs and as you can see the end of the pliers has marked the baseboard but because the baseboard is not finished but that is not a problem because I am not working on a fully finished polished baseboard. When I start the piping operation you will see that more damage will occur. After removing two of the studs I turned them over, fitted two lock nuts and then tightened them into the board with some Loctite 603. After fitting each stud, I unlocked the lock nuts with a socket and a spanner and moved on to the next one. I forgot to video this bit on the first pair. I'm applying some Loctite 603 into the holes. And eventually, when all the studs are fitted the right way around with a nice domed head, I can fit the pump into position on top of the block. And doesn't it look, well, horrible? A roughly made brass block like this just doesn't look right. It needs cutting to be exactly the same size as the base of the pump. Then the entire pump unit, including its base, will look much better. This is of course not the finished job. Apart from the fact I need to paint the pump black, which will make it match the boiler, I also need to make a matching base and stick the base to the pump so the pump and base can be painted as one unit and fitted to the baseboard as one unit. And I think this will look a good bit better than it does at the moment. I'm sure that some people would just leave the pump on the slab of brass like this, but I can't do with it, it's bothering me a great deal. It's nothing to do with OCD or anything like that, it just does not look good. Plus the holes in the brass are too big, so you can actually see part of the hole. No, this is no good at all. The main thing is, the pump is very solidly mounted to the baseboard. This pump has a large ram, and when it's being used to pump water into the boiler, against 60 pounds per square inch. It definitely needs a solid mounting. You'll see the finished pump assembly in the next episode of this series. But as I mentioned earlier, if you want to see the process of repairing holes in the wrong place in pieces of brass, please watch the video about this. In Model Engineering for Beginners, I will upload the video in a couple of days. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.